Hello everyone, and welcome to the Stalwart Initiative. I'm Kyle, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Artificer class for D&D 5e. Uh, the officially published Artificer class that recently came out in Eberron, Rising from the Last War. And good book, by the way, very good book. Uh, so this is our first post-launch officially released full class for D&D 5e. And uh, it's highly anticipated, at least for me and some other people, especially the Eberron the setting, but Artificer was uh, a perfect insert for there. And uh, yeah, did not disappoint for me. We're going to go over all the features and uh, see what you think. So first up... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so the Artificer is a, util a utility class, though certain options of it do have some offensive, good offensive capabilities, but it is a half-caster class, much like the um, Paladin and the, and the Ranger. They're not a full-caster class, so they have magic capabilities, but it's not their... Uh, they can cast spells, but it's not their, like, sole premise. It's not uh, the backbone. But uh, we're going to go over that. So uh, the Artificer, is, as far as hit points, hit die is a D8 hit die, which is middle of the road as far as hit points go. And it has proficiency, starting proficiencies of light armor, medium armor, and shields, as well as simple weapons, all simple weapons, and tool proficiencies, which are a core uh, focus of the class. Uh, you start out with proficiency in Thieves' Tools, Tinker's tools and one type of artisan's tools of your choice. And uh, you also have proficiency in constitution and intelligence saving throws. Constitution saving throws are a great boon to have proficiency in, uh, with, especially with casting classes like the Artificer that can use spells that require concentration. So that way, if somebody's trying to break your concentration, uh, you can, having Proficiency in con saves will help you out in that. Uh, also, you have proficiency in two skills of your choice uh, from the list. And it is a pretty decent list, pretty well-rounded list. Uh, you can choose from Arcana, History, Investigation, Medicine, Nature, Perception, and Sleight of Hand. Uh, two standouts in that list, Investigation and Perception, are pretty useful in, in almost every uh, instance. But uh, it, it's a pretty well-rounded list altogether. So your starting equipment uh, that, that you get at level 1 is you start with any two simple weapons of your choice. A light crossbow uh, t with 20 bolts, your choice of studded leather armor or scale mail, and thieves tools and a dungeoneer's pack. So you do start with thieves tools, but uh, none of the artisan tools... Um, that the artificers are, are normally uh, associated with, but that's okay. We'll get to that then. So if uh, I, I like that they put this statement in here. If you forgo the starting equipment, as well as the items offered by your background, you start with 5d4 times 10 gold pieces to buy your equipment. So in, in normally you have that option, or if your DM allows it, you do have the option to sell your stuff back, uh, but it's not flatly stated a, a number like that uh, right with the class like this is. So I thought that was a nice touch for, for Wizards to add that there. Uh, let's take a look at the at the chart, your class chart. So it's going to show you your what features you get at what level and how many your infusions, which we'll talk about then, and your spells, how many cantrips you know, and how many spell slots you get at, at, each, le at each level. And yeah, notice that you only start with two cantrips. It, it, we'll, we'll also get to that here in a minute. But um, yeah, so uh, another optional role, uh, what I th which I thought was nice for wizards to add, is uh, the optional role for firearm proficiency. Basically stating that if the DM has firearms in the setting that you are that you're in that you're playing in. Uh, and especially if you're using the, the firearm rules from chapter nine of the DM's guide, uh, that your your if your DM does allow it, you can be proficient with firearms. So nice little touch. Glad they added that. And your first feature at level one is magical tinkering. At first level, you learn how to invest a spark of magic into mundane objects. To use this ability, you must have a tinkerer's tools or other artisan's tools in hand. 
you then touch a tiny non-magical object as an action and give it one of the following magical properties of your choice. And basically this is a, you're, you're taking features like of Druidcraft and Prestidigitation and you're placing it into a, a very small object uh, indefinitely, really. Um, the object can shed five, five foot of bright light and uh, five additional foot of dim light, so like 10 foot light radius. Uh, you can also have it so that it emits, a, when it's touched or tapped, it emits a recording, uh, a short recording, uh, which is nice. And you can have it emit um, an odor. You can have it emit a, a sound, a simple sound, nonverbal sound. And you can have it also have uh, words written on it or uh, a picture or a mixture of the two uh, written on it, which is really nice. It can leave secret messages for people. And uh, the chosen property lasts indefinitely. As an action, you can touch the object and end the property early. You can bestow magic on multiple objects, touching one object each time you use this feature, though a single object can only bear one property at a time. The maximum number of objects you can affect with this feature at one time is equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum of one. Uh, if you try to exceed your maximum, the oldest property in immediately ends and the new property applies. So the, the first time we're going to see this, uh, the first of several, um, is the, it's the, t the amount of objects you can have affected at one time is based on your intelligence modifier. So uh, just to put it up front, in the Artificer class, your intelligence modifier, getting that up as soon as possible is crucial. It affects many features of the class. And uh, it'll, so it'll affect your maximum amount of objects you can have active with this uh, feature. And uh, another note, so when your maximum is met and you create a, um, you imbue a new object with the magical tinkering, your oldest one dissipates. And so you might want to keep track of that list. So maybe in your character sheet and one of the, 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 the extra columns towards like the, the second or third sheet, um, just kind of keep a list of which which uh, the objects you have imbued and in what order. So that way, if you imbue a new one, the oldest one, you can write that off and the oldest one dissipates. Just a, just a, something to keep in mind, keeping track. Uh, so next up uh, in, on level one, you get your spell casting feature. Um, you've studied the works of magic and how to channel it through objects. As a result, you gain the ability to cast spells. To observer, you don't appear to be casting spells in a conventional way. You look as if you're producing wonders using mon mundane ob items or outlandish inventions. So uh, a rather unique way to cast your spells instead of just the, 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 norm the normal components uh, and, and other matters. So let's take a look at the spell list that you are given as an artificer. Uh, let me make mine bigger so I can actually read it. There we go. Uh, so a pretty decent list, actually better than the artificers were afforded in earlier iterations of the artificer in Unearthed Arcana. Pretty well-rounded list, very utility heavy, and there's a few offensive features in there. Uh, but take note, there's all these nice cantrips, but you only start out with two. And as you'll see when we get to, when we do the subclasses, stuff mending is is a pretty crucial one depending on how you're going about your artificer so yeah you, you really probably want an offensive cantrip option and then mending oh that's tough tough deciding with all those good cantrips which ones to take so uh, let's see here okay and go moving down at uh, tools required so goes over about how you're casting your spells. You produce your artificer spell effects through your tools. You must have a spell casting focus, specifically these tools or some kind of artisan tools in hand when you cast any spell with the spell casting feature. So luckily you do start with thieves tools and you're starting equipment, but you don't start with any other artisan's tools unless you buy it yourself. You must be proficient with the tool to use it in this way. And that tells you that you can look and see what artisan the artisan tool list in the player's handbook. If you want to consult that to see which ones are artisan tools. After you gain the infuse item feature at second level, you can also use any item bearing one of your infusions as a spell casting focus. This is also a wonderful feature. So even if you don't have access to your tool sets or a tool set, 
let's say someone takes your your thieves tools away from you and you no longer have access to them well if you imbued an item with your infusion which we'll we'll, we'll touch on at your second level feature then you can still use that infused item whether it be armor or a weapon or whatever you can still use that infused item as your spell casting focus wonderful feature okay also at level one you're getting cantrips so you learn two cantrips and you will learn more later on as denoted in the uh, the chart earlier uh, preparing casting spells so you're a prepared spell caster you prepare them at the beginning of the day and uh, it's very nice but uh, yeah just keep in mind you're you're a half caster so you're not going to get uh, all the options you would as a uh, as a full caster uh, so your spell casting ability is based on your intelligence so the artificer is the only the second the second only spell casting class to include um, intelligence as your main focus now granted uh, the um, elders knight as uh, was the like a third tier caster uh, fighter subclass they also used intelligence as well but uh, but wizard is your only other full class that is revolved around intelligence now uh, you also gain ritual casting for any of your artificer spells that have uh, that have it and that you have prepared and i went over the spell list already um this is a uh, this is nice this is a nice note by wizards of the coast as well these spells are from the player's handbook if a spell's name is followed by an asterisk the spell is instead from xanathar's guide so they let you know that not only are you not uh, the spells on the spell list earlier not completely from the player's handbook they did add some add some xanathar spells on there and they made a special little mark letting you know these spells are from that book so when you're not finding them in your player's handbook you know where where to find them and i recommend xanathar's guide to everything fantastic source book for 5e okay so now we're moving on to second level at second level you gain one of the main features uh this class is involving is the infuse item you gain the ability to imbue mundane items with certain magical infusions the magic items you create with this feature are effectively prototypes of permanent items, which they can kind of be permanent items, but you'll you'll see what that means here in a bit. Um, I'm going to go over a um, this briefly. I'm going to touch over this infused item briefly. I am going to make a separate video for the infused item and the specifics uh, on the infused item and also the specifics on the subclasses. So we'll just touch over this. Uh, basically you start out with four and you know four infusions from a rather extensive list and the what you have access to at level two is minor weapon buffs weapon and armor buffs and you also have there is a list that you can um, make magic items uh, from imagine from the magic item list and uh, yeah, we'll go over those specifically, but it starts out as, as these minor buffs, these minor infusions, but you, as you level, you get access to uh, more extensive fusions then. And we will go over that entire list in a few days' time whenever I release the video uh, going over that. So subscribe so uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, so that you, uh, start with initiative, <laughs> so you can see, um, yeah, yeah, so you can see those infusions. So it tells you about uh, infusing the items and how many you can do and how many you can have active. Uh, like I said, we're going to go over those specific uh, features. If you didn't already read here, we're going to go over those specific features in that infusion video and the specialist video. So also that's to keep these videos from being too uh, horrendously long. So also the artificer specialist, which is your subclass, you get at third level. And you get to pick from the Alchemist, which is a very healing and utility heavy subclass. And the Artillerist, which is more of an offensive uh, subclass that gives you, you can build like a small turret or have uh, an Eldritch Cannon. And the Battlesmith, which helps, or which allows you to have a uh, construct that aids you in battle. And it's more of a martial version of the Artificer. And like I said, I'll be releasing a video very soon going over all the specifics of those subclasses. Um, this is this is just a review of the class in general. So next up, we have the right tool for the job. Also at third level, you learn how to produce exactly the tool you need. With Tinkerer's Tools in hand, you can magically create one set of artisan's tools in an un unoccupied space within five feet of you. 
This creation requires one hour of uninterrupted work, which can coincide with a short or long rest. Though the product of magic, the tools are not magical and they vanish when you use this feature again. Uh, this, this is a pretty useful feature. Uh, the only caveat there is that it says uh, with Tinkerer's Tools in hand. So you don't start with Tinkerer's Tools. The only tools you actually start with at level one are the Thieves' Tools. Um, so you try to get a hold of, uh, by, by third level, uh, try to get a hold of Tinkerer's Tools, and then you can magically create any artisan tool. Uh, and um, you need an hour to do so. And they're not magical, but you you make them with magic. And a nice little hack is uh they vanish when you use this feature again so if you you know depending on how uh how much your dm will let you let you get away with you could sell these magically created tools and and then make them uh, vanish again when you when you use the feature again just saying not something i would abuse but uh nice little nice little hack there so at fourth level begin the normal ability score improvement at fourth eighth twelfth sixteenth and nineteenth and um, yeah, as normal, you can't go above 20 if you're you're upping your ability score. Uh, let's see here. Uh, at sixth level, you gain tool expertise. Starting at sixth level, your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses your proficiency with the tool. So another reason that, yeah, this, this class is high, very much involved around, uh, involved around tools and tool proficiencies. So, um, yeah, getting expertise in those tools, especially these tools, super useful in, especially if you don't have a rogue in the party. So you become the, uh, <laughs> you become the rogue in that instance. So at uh, seventh level, we get a wonderful feature called flash of genius. Starting at seventh level, you gain the ability to come up with solutions under pressure. When you or another creature you can see within 30 feet of you makes an ability check or a saving throw, you can use a reaction to add your intelligence modifier to the rule. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum of once. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. This is clutch. This is a great feature. And again, twice in this feature, you see intelligence modifier. So you, the bonus you give uh, a um, yourself or another creature uh, is based on your intelligence modifier. And the number of times you can use it per long rest is based on your intelligence modifier. So let's get them, get that modifier up as soon as possible. Uh, so you use your reaction and this is an ability check or saving throw. Well, initiative is an ability check. So you can use this to give somebody a, a boost of, uh, you're more than likely going to have a, a three to, well, at, at seventh level, so a three or four, possibly even a five is your ability modifier. So give them a boost to their initiative, give yourself a boost to your initiative, or clutch saving throws. Uh, you know, you can help save your party from, from death or from horrible status effects multiple times per long rest. Great feature, wonderful feature. Uh, let me see here. Um, so next up at 10th level, you get magic item adept. When you reach 10th level, you achieve a profound understanding of how to use and make magic items. You can attune to up to four magic items at once. And if you craft a magic item with a rarity of common or uncommon, it takes you a quarter of the normal time and it costs you half as much of the usual gold. So this is good. Uh, in in respect to you have infusions that some infusions do require you to attune them which goes against your your uh base of th three items you can have attuned to most most characters can only attune to three items three magic items at one time so this ups that to four and also if your campaign that you're in is running uh, downtime activities also a great detailed downtime activity stuff in xanathar's guide by the way um, if you're running downtime activities and you're trying to create these magic items that are taking you time and money using downtime uh, the the second feature in this is, is very useful if you're just making common or uncommon magic items so get with your dm on that and hopefully they'll work with you on um helping you be able to create more magic items. At 11th level, you get spell storing item. You learn how to store a spell in an object. 
Whenever you finish a long rest, you can touch one simple or martial weapon or one item that you can use as a spellcasting focus, and you store a spell in it, choosing a first or second level spell from the Artificer's spell list that requires one action to cast. You needn't have it prepared, which is nice. Uh, so you can actually store a spell that you normally won't have access to to cast because it's not prepared. So while holding the object, a creature can take an action to produce the spell's effect from it using your spell casting ability, mo uh, ability modifier. Sweet, so this doesn't have to be just you. A creature can take the action. If the spell requires concentration, the creature must concentra concentrate. The spell stays in the object until it's been used a number of times equal to twice your intelligence modifier, minimum of twice. That's uh, it's not something you usually see, minimum of twice. Or uh, until you use this feature again to store a spell in an object. That's amazing. So it's not only X amount of times... Um, X amount of times per that day, you just give them a loaded, a loaded gun, uh, a loaded item with spells in it. Wonderful. And again, based on your intelligence modifier. So at 11th level, you should uh, hopefully be at a four or five for your intelligence modifier. Uh, so that is, it gets, um, it gets twice that. So eight to 10 uses. That is amazing. That's awesome. And you don't have to be selfish, you can share it with other people. So, uh, at 14th level, you get Magic Item Savant. You're, at 14th level, your skill with magic items deepens more. You can attune to up to five magic items at once, and you ignore all class, race, spell, and level requirements on attuning to or using a magic item. This is great for, you can use things uh, that might uh, hamstring you into a... Uh, into a specific class or race, you bypass all those restrictions uh, because you are a magic item savant. So that's right. That's, that's a nice touch. Uh, it's giving you that fifth uh, attunement slot, which is needed, and also giving you an extra feature. At 18th level, you get magic item master. Starting at 18th level, you can attune up to, to, up to six magic items at once. And no other special feature there, but you are now doubled the default limitations on how many items you can attune to. Uh, much needed because of the, your infusions, but uh, yeah, nice feature, nice feature. Uh, your capstone ability. So at 20th level, you have Soul of Artifice. At 20th level, you develop a m mystical connection to your magic items, which you can draw on for protection. You gain a plus one bonus to all saving throws per magic item you are currently attuned to. And you also, if you are re reduced to zero hit points, but not killed outright, you can use your reaction to end one of your artificer infusions, causing you to drop to one hit point instead. So this, uh, at, first, when, at first glance, I really didn't think it was that, that good uh, for a capstone ability, but it's, I haven't used it yet, but it's growing on me, just, uh, just looking it over again. Um, so it does presume you're going to be a little selfish and not give out a whole lot of your infusions because you want them to be on you because you get a plus one bonus um, to all attuned magic items you have on you. Uh, so that, that could be great, especially for saving throws. Oh, so good. So good. And if you're reduced to zero hit points, you can give up one of these, one of these infusions. That's, that's amazing. Uh, so it'll bring you back. Now you have to use your reaction. So it's not going to be something you can spam in one round, but each round you can use that each round is, and give up an infusion infusion each round to go back to one hit point, as long as they don't outright destroy you. Uh, so we have subclass options coming up then. I'm going to make a separate video on that. That'll be out in a couple days on the YouTube channel. Uh, I know I'm st streaming this on Twitch at the moment and also recording it. So if you're on YouTube, uh, go ahead and subscribe and uh, come on back. If you're um, if you're on Twitch, if you're seeing this on Twitch, just go ahead and uh, my channel description, scroll down, check out the YouTube tab, click on it, and it'll send you over to the YouTube channel and you can check it out there. So thank you every, uh, very much, everyone, for, for joining me on this and look forward to giving the other detailed video. And um, yeah, if you want to see uh, what's going on with 
the initiative on Twitch. For right now, we are streaming uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. We have a campaign highlighting Unearthed Arcana class subclasses on Wednesdays, and we have a campaign highlighting uh, the DMs Guild content, campaigns by wonderful uh, DMs, DMs Guild content creators uh, on Saturdays. So, yeah, you can check out the, uh, the Twitch channel for that, and... Until next time, I'll catch you one later. Have a good one.